Jeff, off of your name. Welcome back, Jeff Allen off the Green Iron. Well, today we are back out of the property. We're going to go uh, work on the shelter uh, for part two. We've got also got some interesting things today. We're going to show some of you how to process and make charred cloth, and uh, we're going to move the fire pit around and so on and so forth. So come along, let's go. exactly how we left it we were working on it the other day and uh, weren't happy with uh, some of the supports so uh, we laid pulled it all apart and uh, we're, we're gonna beef it up and make it a little stronger right from the start we're also going to take the fire pit here and slide it over directly in front of the shelter so we get that reflective effect let's drop the pack and get working Throws up pretty good. I'm gonna make this fire pit a little bigger and a little wider to really act as a better reflector into the front of the, uh, the shelter. Height on the back walls here. <clears throat> Let's look for some other tall rocks. It's done for now. Ah, boys would be proud. We've got a tall reflector wall, and all the bottom is lined with rocks as well. A couple of big ones, probably about three inches thick. So this is going to satisfy me for having that base fire pit area, and from there we can build a reflector wall. Now that I'm done crawling around on my hands and knees with the fire, I want to show you this. These are some Dakota oversized chaps. And uh, you might laugh at the thought, but it really saves out your pants. Waterproof on the front. 
So now that I'm done crawling around making the fire, I'm ready to pull those off, let my under layer that's clean breathe, and I continue, continue with working on the shelter off the ground. Certainly a good investment, packs up tiny, and you don't have to wear them all the time, on and off as needed. Let's get back to the shelter. It was, uh, while I was checking my videos and, and reading some of my comments that uh, this next thought dawned on me. I had a YouTuber say, oh, great start, great start. I'm just going to run out and get some, uh, some paracord and then I can get started. And my question was, well, why do you have to do that? Why don't you just get started? I mean, part of being a bushcrafter is being able to utilize what you have in your environment. And if that environment's your garage, and what you have available is some yellow polypropylene rope or some some kind of binder twine use it obviously if it's something that's going to be left in a public space private lands uh, that you want to take down then you know something that's going to be decomposing is a good idea but today i've got some some poly spiral spiral like binder twine some poly rope and some other cordage you don't need I mean it would be great to have big spools of pre-wrap paracord but if that's the only thing that's holding you back I'd consider why you're a bushcrafter anyways just get out and start building don't make excuses for lack of resources to stop you from getting outdoors and enjoying your outdoors. Get out there, make use of what you have on hand, and don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry that it doesn't match to your environment. The, pro the Being a bushcrafter is building something functional for a purpose from your surroundings. Again, if your surroundings are the woods and what you have available is yellow polypropylene rope, then that's what you have to use. Use it. Always take it down when you're done with it. Don't leave it in the woods. But for the meantime, use what you have. Make use of your resources. All right, I'm gonna make use of mine and get this shelter started. Ties for later. This is dirty.
nice. That'll work. Yeah, the fire straw is ideal. This happened to be an old fly swatter. I cut the end off the top, and you have to cut the end off the swatter to see there's a hole right through. Now that's telescoping action. It's really, really convenient. It closes right down, slides in my uh, fire pack. I open it up, and it's a small diameter, but it's nice, easy breaths. Not hard, just nice and slow. Long and slow, it really helps get that fire started. Making charred cloth is a handy uh, kind of handy resource it takes and holds a spark and, and sometimes that's all you need to get uh, your fire bundle going now carrying it in a container is not a bad idea unfortunately I had my fire steel in here and being with the charred cloth being so brittle it uh, it all went to uh, virtually dust so we're gonna get rid of that and uh, we're gonna start start fresh and we'll show you what you need one of the things you can do is repurpose a tin you can use an old soup can um, or any any kind of steel tin. This is an old uh, tin that my wife uses for uh, for tea, but it, it serve it's going to serve the purpose well. It's got a metal lid, and we're able to close it. Now we're going to put some holes in the top, but we'll do that in a moment. So what we have to start with is you have to get an old pair. What I like to use, anyways, is an old pair of jeans. And what you want to do is take those jeans and cut them. You can cut it with a knife. I happen to have a pair of scissors here. Cut them into little squares. Now I've learned that I like at least my squares because they're going to shrink to be about one and a half inch squares. And that'll give you a good, good solid piece of charred cloth when you're done. So we're going to, and there's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't have to be squares, just little swatches like this. Okay, and we're going to cut these up and we're going to loosely fill the container with them. Getting ready for the next step, which is putting these on the fire. So I have a, I'm going to make it worth my while. I'm going to cut up quite a few. So here's the whole old hem off a pair of pants. Whatever container you're using, I don't think quantity. Uh, really matters provided that it there's a uh, room around them you don't want them packed full you want the smoke and carbon to be able to move freely around and through the material you want all the material to smolder and essentially becomes I like to say carbonated but uh, infused in carbon uh, it doesn't get a full burn is what we're, what we're going for. So. Making shard cloth is an easy, fun activity uh, to do with kids. 
and certainly it uh, helps us for getting prepared and having this ready in our um, field bag or camp bag. So what I'm doing is cutting up some denim. In, denim. This is off an old pair of jeans. I like using jeans. So we've cut this these pair of jeans material into roughly one inch or two inch squares. Once we turn it into charred cloth, they'll become very brittle and very uh, they'll, they'll shrink. They'll, they'll burn up and they'll shrink and get a little smaller. So I'm just going to finish this little bundle here and I'll show you what's next. Now with our jeans all cut into manageable small pieces, we're going to take this big pile and we're going to take our can and we're just going to put them inside the can like so. Loose fit. Now we're going to take our lid and with our lid we're going to have to put a number of holes in the lid. So I'm going to set this down on the log and punch some holes in the lid. just want the the smoke to be able to escape so there's a number of random holes punched in the lid and that'll allow excess smoke to leave the container now with the container comfortably full we're gonna put that in on top of the container and set that right in the fire okay you don't want to be cooking on the fire we're gonna move the water out of the way because this is gonna give off quite a few fumes it's gonna smoke quite bad so we're gonna make make a little place here to set our can and right into the fire we go now the cans gonna burn and flame and probably discolor a little bit but that's okay now we watch and we wait for the can to start emanating lots and lots of smoke. Essentially we're trying to cook those pieces of fabric and we continue to do that until there is no more smoke coming out of the top of the can. Now you can start to see the that discolored smoke coming at the top out of the holes and that's what you want to see that's all the uh, kind of the chemicals and the kind of the partial burn of the uh, the denim but there's not enough oxygen in the can for a complete burn for it to burn up to ash so it's basically smoking those pieces of denim I'm gonna let that go for another few minutes and then I'm gonna shake the can up gently just to uh, make sure I get a full Kind of full saturation of that carbon and those pieces get all kind of charred. Now we'll just set it off and let it cool. Okay, we've given it a few minutes to cool off and our can is quite charred. So now with the big reveal. And there we have it. All big pieces of a charred cloth. We're going to continue to let that cool down. And then we're going to put some of those back in our in our pack. Our fire kit. You see the they've they've all changed color. Some of them are slightly brown, but that's exactly what we wanted. I might have left them on a little longer than I'd like, but that worked. There we go. I'm ready for the next batch.
Okay, just to show you how well this works, here's a few strands of the charred cloth. You can see how small they are. They're not ideal, but if that's all you had, that's all you had. Here's my old striker. Again, it's uh, not too much left of this one. But I'll just show you. I'm just going to strike briefly on the cloth, and there you go. You see that? It caught that short, quick little spark, and from there, that'll keep growing and get super hot. You put that inside of your your fire bundle. Okay, let me show you again. Again, super hot. So again, off you had just the little smallest of fibers. Okay, we're gonna set that down there. There we go. You can see that continuing to grow in there. And that will grow and you pour that into your fire bundle, tinder bundle, and you're good to go. So that's the importance of charred cloth, especially when you don't have a really dry tinder bundle. Enjoy your outdoors. Some headway, that's good. Maybe it's great. For a, for a night night fire, but so far so good. Well, guys, thanks for joining me today. What a great day in the woods! Uh, obviously, you saw the uh, the construction of the roof and uh, had that all lashed in, and we had a had a lot to do today. We uh, just had a bunch of sticks we started with because everything came down last day. We were trying to do an adjustment, and uh, and it all fell down. But 
we got it all back together and uh, I think it's going to be great. Uh, next time we come, I think I'm going to put a partition right in here, right from the tree to tree. And that will give it a short distance and be able to really create that uh, reflective uh, kind of radiating heat off uh, a reflective back wall that I'm going to uh, bring in. But the option uh, still exists to move that out of the way and open this right to the back and have uh, uh, more bedding area for uh, those that wish to join me on a chilly overnight in the woods. So until next time, as always, click like, subscribe, and share. And thanks so much for subscribing. I've uh, surpassed the 100 mark and well on my way to two. So uh, push that like, subscribe, and share button. And uh, we'll see you next time in the great outdoors. Enjoy your outdoors. Jeff Allen signing off. Bye for now.